But first, President Trump's policies and his comments and tweets have sparked a new wave of protests and roiling anger. However, as William Brangham reports, it's also caused some to wonder if the protests are going too far. If you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. Congresswoman Maxine Waters has become the latest leading voice in the resistance to President Trump, most recently protesting the administration's controversial zero-tolerance immigration policies. The president, a self-described counterpuncher, pushed back on Twitter, calling Waters an extraordinarily low IQ person, adding, she has just called for harm to supporters of the Make America Great Again movement. Be careful what you wish for. Those supporters were in full force at a rally in South Carolina last night. They're only good at one thing. What's their term? Resist. It's the party of Maxine Waters. Do you believe her? On MSNBC, Waters clarified that her calls for protest are not calls for violence. I did not call for harm for anybody. The president lied again. This back and forth is just the latest in an escalating debate over political discourse and just how far is too far. Democratic activists have aligned with Waters' strategy, openly confronting some administration officials who implement or defend the president's immigration policies. Last week, Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen was shouted out of a Mexican restaurant. You are a criminal! Protesters also rallied outside Nielsen's home this evil man lives in this building. and the home of Trump advisor Stephen Miller. Over the weekend, White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders was asked to leave a Virginia restaurant by the owner who said her staff felt angry over the impact of the president's policies. We are allowed to disagree, but we should be able to do so freely and without fear of harm. And this goes for all people, regardless of politics. Some Democrats in Congress, including House Leader Nancy Pelosi and Senate Leader Chuck Schumer, have urged more civility and a different kind of action. If you disagree with a politician, organize your fellow citizens to action and vote them out of office. But no one should call for the harassment of political opponents. That's not right. That's not American. But Waters and others point out that President Trump has his own history of inflammatory statements, some of which they say encourage violence. I like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. All right, yeah, get him out. Try not to hurt him. If you do, I'll defend you in court. Don't worry about it. President's musings are so frequent, the New York Times has tracked 472 people, places, and things Donald Trump has insulted on Twitter. So is there a point where these public protests go too far, or are these moves the appropriate response to policies that have crossed their own boundaries? To explore these questions, I'm joined by Quentin James. He's the founder of the Collective PAC, which is working to increase African-American representation in elected offices. Chris Buskirk is a radio host in Phoenix and editor of the conservative blog American Greatness. And former Pennsylvania Governor Ed Rendell is a longtime and prominent voice in the Democratic Party. Gentlemen, uh, thank you all for being here. Um, Quentin James, I would like to start with you first. Uh, Sarah Sanders gets asked to leave a restaurant. Protests are occurring outside Kirsten Nielsen's home. Uh, these protesters seem very angry about what they are uh, protesting. What do you make of all of this? I think it's great. Uh, it's great for our country. It's great for Democrats. Uh, listen, the administration is, you know, in the midst of working on uh, critical issues that are affecting people's real lives. They, we are removing children from their parents at the borders. Uh, we are, you know, talking about taxes that are benefiting the rich. Um, and, you know, we're talking about uh, NFL players and their inability to protest, and even today, the Muslim ban. Uh, these are real issues that get to the core of American values. And so I think it's a, a great um, show of where the country stands, uh, where America really is on these issues. And, and you know, uh, we, we want to see more of it. Chris Buskirk, I know you're a supporter of the president. Uh, what do you make of these very uh, public protests against members of the administration? 
Uh, well, I'll tell you more than uh, more than a supporter of the president, which I am, and, and happy uh, and happy to say so. I'm I am a supporter of civil discourse, and that is uh, what I see being degraded daily uh, by the advocacy of uh, of unrest and in some cases of violence by the left. I mean, we look at. Uh, we look at the Sarah Sanders incident at a restaurant in Virginia the other day. This wasn't just uh, the owner politely asking her to leave, saying, I don't want to I don't want to serve you here, which I think would be bad enough. This was the owner chasing her family across the street to where they were trying to eat another meal. And, uh, you know, look, if uh, Democrats think this is good politics, then I say, well, we'll see you in November, because it just isn't. Uh, and it, it degrades what we're trying to accomplish as a as a country of, of fellow citizens that wants to govern ourselves according to uh, according to our reason and not according to our passions. Ed Rendell, what do you think? Does this uh, degrade the public discourse or is this uh, <clears throat> meaningful, vigorous democracy at work? Well, I think you have to draw a line. If people protest outside a governmental office, outside the Senate chamber, the House chamber, or at a town meeting where the public official has called it as part of his or her business, that's absolutely appropriate and fair, and the left should do it and the right should do it, because that's our God-given right as Americans. But to in interfere with someone's private life when they're going out with their family somewhere, that is uncivil discourse, and it, it resounds to the detriment of the people who are doing it. And I agree with Chris. If we keep doing this, and we're not alone in doing it, the right has certainly done it, if we keep doing this, it's going to fire up the Republican base in ways that nothing positive can, and it's going to make winning the election much more difficult. But I want to say one thing. The person who could solve this and who bears the greatest responsibility for creating these, this type of viciousness is the president himself, because he has been the most vicious, the most insulting, the most degrading of all the commentators, whether they be from the left or the right. And the president doesn't understand that I think the number one job of the president of the United States is to set a moral tone for the country. And the president should say, stop it. People who support me, stop it. People who are against me, stop it. We've got to get together and move this country forward, and we're not going to do it by shouting hateful things at each other. Quentin James, uh, pick up on what Ed Randell is saying there. He's arguing that if you want to protest, protest outside a government building. Don't, don't confront someone at a restaurant. Don't go to their home. Listen, I uh, completely respect uh, Governor Randell, uh, but I disagree, and, and here's why. Uh, we saw during the Civil Rights Movement when we, uh, uh, African Americans were told, you know, uh, don't march, you know, don't protest. Uh, and we saw Congressman John Lewis at the time, uh, a member of SNCC, getting beat in the head, uh, bloody, with a billy club by the police who were, you know, supposed to be there to protect and serve. Uh, but if we fast forward today, I think we're hearing some of the, the similar things. Uh, it is totally lawful. Uh, folks are not breaking the law by raising their voices and showing up, whether they're at movie theaters or restaurants uh, or even to someone's home. These individuals are public officials or they work for public officials, and therefore they are, the, the public is expressing their feelings and showing, uh, again, the true American values of freedom of speech, the true American values of accountability and justice. Uh, we are literally, again, talking about banning Muslims in this country today with the Supreme Court's uh, ruling. We are talking about ripping children from their families and from their mothers and fathers' arms. This isn't a conversation about civility. This is about life and death for many people. Uh, and so this is, in my opinion, uh, justified. And again, if Democrats want to win in November, we need to see more of this. We're talking about not the Trump voters who we need to be persuading, but a lot of Democrats who didn't hear enough from us or see enough from us in 2016. Those are the folks we want to see turn out in November. And uh, again, I think we can need to conceive uh, more of this work. Chris Buskirk, um, I, I know you disagree with this type of action. And but let's put, the, let's put the shoe on the other political foot. Let's imagine the circumstances were changed, and there was someone in the White House who you vehemently disagreed with, someone who you thought whose policies were chipping away at the very foundation of this country. And for many on the left who are protesting, ripping children from their parents at the border fits that bill. Let's say someone was doing those actions that you really disagreed with. What would you do? What would you urge your supporters to do? 
I, I would try. I would urge my supporters, and we do the exact same thing we try and do today, which is to try and win the argument, try and win the uh, political debate, convince people why why you're right, and take that uh, take that to the ballot box. That is the system that we have, and it's the only sustainable system if we want to uh, if we want to live in a society that values freedom. Or justice. The uh, the idea that by uh, the idea that by breaking that boundary between uh, the public and the private in some way advances the public good, I, I think it is self evidently false. And uh, you know, it, I don't see Quentin putting his home address out on Twitter right now, ask inviting people who disagree with them to come by his house. Nor should he. Nor should he. And that is but, but uh, that's a boundary not about that I think we should all respect. It's, it's, it's not about disagreement. These people are literally making policy that impacts people's lives. I'm not a public official, so you're right. I'm not going to put my address on Twitter for folks to come to my house and, and show me, uh, you know, what the, what they believe. This isn't about disagreements on uh, ideology. This is about, again, banning people from coming to this country because of their religious background. This is about banning children and removing children from their parents who are seeking a asylum and coming here lawfully, right? This is not about a civil discourse. And let's also not forget, this is the same party, the same individuals who were hanging up Obama effigies, right, by nooses in 2008, 2010. These are folks who showed up at uh, uh, congressional town halls in 2010 with semi-loaded auto uh, automatic rifles, right? These are folks who are are wearing Make America Great hats, going into our schools and our churches and killing people, right? So this isn't about the left is turning to violence. No, no this is I'll about our God giving right to, to freedom of speech. I remember June 2017 when a left-wing activist showed up uh, at, at, a, at a baseball diamond and started shooting at a bunch of Republican and, congressmen. And, and, and that's what and that is, I remember. And that I remember is one, again, uh, gentlemen, uh, the can I just hand. interrupt for a second there? Um, Ed Rendell, I'd like you to pick up on this issue because this is something that the president indicated in his criticism of Maxine Waters. He said she was calling for violence. She says absolutely not. Do you believe that, as some do, that this is a slippery slope that could lead to violence? Look, Quinn is wrong and Chris is wrong in part. And I say that in difference to civil discourse. But uh, they're wrong in part because, Chris, part of the Constitution gives us the right to protest, not just vote. And I agree with you. We should vote. But we also have the right to protest. But that protest should be done in a decent way, outside of government buildings, at town meetings, where it's part of the public dynamic. It shouldn't be vo visited on people when they're doing private things like shopping in a supermarket or eating in a restaurant. And Quentin, if you think this helps us win the election, you're crazy. I've had a lot of independents, people who were tending to, to want to vote Democrat for Congress, saying, I'm not voting for Democrats or Republicans. Both sides suck. And this type of action backfires on us because it doesn't do anything to help us, and it fires up the Republican base, and they're going to come out in droves, whereas a month ago, they were dispirited, and they weren't going to come out. We were going to have a 10 percent lead in turnout. But the bottom line is, if this country's ever going to solve its problems, we have to do it together. We have to do it together. We're never going to have 61 votes in the Senate, the House, and the presidency again. You're not going to be able to get things done unless we try to work together. And the more that we have this, this hateful stuff, the more difficult it becomes for us to do anything. Um, if we don't start doing things together, we're going down the tubes. Gentlemen, I'm sorry we have to end it there. Ed Rendell, Quentin James, Chris Buskirk, thank you all very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks.